Welcome back to another video everybody. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the recent changes that have been made in the highway code. And these changes are quite significant, so it's important that you know what these are. So let's get started. So yes, there's been some new changes in the highway code recently. And these changes are quite significant, so it's important that you familiarize yourself with these changes. I'm not gonna go through each one of these changes in this video, as this is gonna be a brief video, but what I will do is put a link in the description so you can have a look at these changes in more detail. And what they're trying to do basically is make the road safer, obviously, and what they've done is created a hierarchy system. And what this means is basically, the bigger the vehicle on the roads, the more responsibility you have of safety of others around you. Potentially, a bigger vehicle can cause more harm if there was an accident. So, for example, in the hierarchy system, if you're, a, let's say, a pedestrian, you would have more priority over a cyclist. And let's say a cyclist would have more priority over a car. And a car, for example, a truck and so on. So, yeah, you need to be aware of other people around you and ensure their safety as well as your own. You still all have responsibilities but as big of the vehicle potentially could cause more damage. So that's why you have to be more considerate about other vulnerable road users around you. That's just one of the changes that have come into place. And there's another change, for example, called the Dutch reach technique. And some of you may have heard of this and some may be thinking, what is this? So let me explain. So what the Dutch reach technique is, is basically when you're opening your car door now, instead of going for the car door with the the hand that's closest to the car door, you need to open the car door with the hand that's further away from the car door. And you might be thinking, why is this? So for example, the reason for this is, let's say if I was opening it with the hand that's further away from the car door, it naturally makes me turn around and then look to see, let's say for example, if there's any cyclists. And same if you're getting out on the other side, you need to go with the hand that's further away from the car door so you're naturally turning your body around, looking, let's say, for example, if there's any cyclists, pedestrians, and so on. Yes, and there's many other changes, like I said. Look in the description link below and familiarize yourself with these changes. So the three key points on when you need to remember when to check your mirrors are before you signal, before you change direction, and before you change your speed. So let's talk about signal one first, which is MSM, which stands for Mirrors Signal Maneuver. So for example, you're driving along and you want to take a right turn junction. So you would check your mirrors center and then right, and then indicate, and then you would turn. You don't want to be checking your mirrors indicating at the same time, and you don't want to be indicating first and then checking your mirrors, because these would be marked as a fault on your driving test. You want to first check your mirrors center and right and then you want to pause to see if there's anything around and act on that and then indicate and then carry out the maneuver. And the maneuver part can be divided into subcategories. So for example, the MSM routine could be MSPSL. So the PSL at the end would be position, speed and look. So once again, you're going down this road again, you're turning right, so you use your mirror center and right. Then you would indicate right and then what you would do is position your car to, to the lane that you need. And then you would slow the car down, speed, and then you're looking to see if it's clear to turn into the junction. So let's say you're on your driving test and you want to use the MSM routine correctly or the MSPSL routine. What you would do, for example, let's say the examiner says to you, can you please take the next turn on your right? What the examiner is now looking at is to see if you're looking in your mirrors. So what you want to be doing is looking in your centre mirror and then your right mirror. And then the examiner will be looking to see if you're indicating or listening out for the indicator sound. And then the examiner will be looking ahead to see if you get in the correct position of the vehicle for that specific turn. And once you've got the position, the examiner will be looking at your speed, whether you're bringing the speed down and how you're bringing that speed down as well. So, for example, you don't want to be coasting, which would be putting the clutch down first rather than the brake. So what you want to do is bring the speed down first with your brake 
and then once you're changing the gears you then put the clutch down change into the correct gear and make sure you bring your clutch up for that gear to take effect if you're driving it on automatic car then obviously this would not apply but if it's a manual car this is what you want to be doing and then once you've done that the next bit is the l which is look and now you're looking into the junction you're turning and looking for any oncoming traffic so this is how you would use the mspsl routine in your driving test and even after you pass your driving test so yeah the other point when you would check your mirrors is change of direction so let me give you an example so let's say you're driving along on a dual carriageway and you want to change from your left hand lane to the right hand lane what you would do is check your mirrors center and right to make sure it's clear for you to go over to the right hand lane be careful here as well because vehicles in your interior mirror will seem to be closer but in your actual door mirror they'll seem to be further away which i'm going to talk about why this is further on in the video so yeah once you've checked your mirrors center and right make sure it's clear and then obviously you can change lanes making sure you let other people know by indicating and when you come back in same again if you want to come back into the left hand lane you need to check your mirrors and let other people know that you're going back into the left hand lane another example let's say you're not changing lanes but you're just changing direction so you're driving along on a road and you're in your own lane and you want to go around a parked vehicle skip or an object on the road you want to make sure you check your mirrors center and right before you go around and then when you come back in after that object car vehicle whatever it is check your mirrors center and left to make sure it's clear for you to go back to the left and make sure you leave plenty of room when you pass in that vehicle for example it might be a car somebody may open the car door so be careful of that so yeah before you change direction make sure you check your mirrors another one you need to do is check your mirrors before you change speed and now might you might be wondering why do you need to check your mirrors when you're changing your speed so let me give you an example so let's say you're driving along on a road and you're doing 30 miles an hour on a 30 road and there's a sign coming up for 40 miles an hour so after that sign if it's safe for you to proceed to 40 you want to get up to 40 miles an hour before you do this you need to make sure you check your mirrors especially center and right mirror if you check all three it's not a fault but especially center and right and the reason for this is if there's a vehicle that starts to overtake you at the point when you're increasing your speed after that 40 sign the other vehicle that's overtaking is going to struggle and then this could cause an accident so it's very important to check your mirrors before you increase your speed to make sure there's no dangers or hazards not just increasing in speed decreasing in speed you need to check your mirrors so let me give you another example so let's say you're coming up to some traffic lights ahead and they're on green let's say and you're approaching these traffic lights and there's a vehicle behind you quite close you want to make sure that you don't break too harshly at these traffic lights if they change so you can anticipate this so if the traffic lights do change because they have been on green for a while and there's a point that they will change that you take this into consideration when you slow down at the traffic lights so yeah earlier on this video i said i'd talk about why some objects appear differently in the mirrors let's say in the interior mirror than they are door mirrors so for example if you're looking in your door mirror the object seems to appear further away but when you look in your interior mirror object seems to be closer why is this happening are your eyes playing tricks on you no they're not playing tricks on you the reason why this is happening is due to the design of these mirrors so let me explain what i mean so the mirror that's inside the car the interior mirror is similar to the mirror that you maybe get inside your house so it's flat surface the door mirrors are slightly different they're curved slightly convexed mirrors so the reason why they're curved is because they can see further out into the road and give you a better view field of view the disadvantage of this is that the objects will appear further away than they actually are so the objects in your interior mirror give you more of a true image of how close it is than they are in your door mirrors so just going over the key points that we've covered in this video so we've spoken about the MSM routine, which is mirrors, signal, maneuver. And then that maneuver can be divided into subcategories. So that would be PSL in full, MSPSL, which stands for mirrors, signal, position, speed, 
and look. And then I went over the key points on when you need to be checking your mirrors. So that would be before you signal, before you change direction, and before you change your speed. And then I briefly spoke about why objects appear further away in your door mirrors than they do in your interior mirror. So all these little key points will help you not only pass your driving test, but hopefully make you a safer driver after you've passed your test. Well, that's it for this video and I hope you found it helpful. Please share it to anybody else that may find this video helpful too. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and you can see any more content that I put out relating to driving. Also, if you could please give it a thumbs up, that will help the YouTube algorithm share it to other people that may find it helpful. Well, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.